Hello kids, it's Auntie Beth from Learn with Auntie Beth. Welcome to a new segment. Before I proceed, let me ask you a question. How often do you get injured or hurt? When you play, you run, you climb, you kick, you jump, and sometimes you fall down and you injure yourself. When that happens, what do you do? <sighs> Cry for help? Check if you're okay? Or get up and play again? So today, Auntie Beth is going to teach you basic first aid skills so that the next time you get injured or hurt, you know what to do. This is a first aid kit. Every household should have one. Check with mommy and daddy where is your skin. If your house doesn't have one, encourage mommy and daddy to get one from the local pharmacies. It comes in different sizes. I have a small one here and I have a bigger one over here. So now, let's check out what's inside this first aid kit. Oh, first up, it's a plaster, basically for small wounds. I have a dodge for bigger wounds, to cover and protect bigger wounds. This is a bandage, basically to wrap your arms, your head or your leg if you are injured. Surgical tape to tape the bandage. Cotton buds. Cotton squares or cotton swaps. Hand sanitizer to clean those hands. That's all to kill any bacteria. Yellow lotions, which works as an antiseptic lotion. Antibiotic cream to uh, to heal the wounds. Hydrocortisone, this is basically more for rashes, mosquito bites, and allergies. I have some anesthetic cream for to relieve muscle aches. I have a pair of scissors, and I have some Panadols uh, for fever, and I also have a thermometer to check the temperature. Now, some of this medication may be expired every now and then, so you got to check out to see the expiry date. Let's start off with a small cut. You may have accidentally cut yourself and it's bleeding. I put a little red mark over here just to show you the wound. So what do you do? Take a clean piece of tissue or cloth, press on it until it stops bleeding. Once it stops bleeding, wash the wounds and wash both hands as well because you want your fingers to be clean. Wash, your, wash the wounds thoroughly, make sure that it's clean. Wash both hands thoroughly as well. Then, take a clean piece of cloth again and pat it dry. Pat the wound dry. Okay. Keep your fingers dry and clean as well. Next up is to take a piece of cotton squares. Dab it with a little bit of Dettol. Now, I like to use Dettol because I like to kill all germs and bacteria on the wounds. Just rub on the wound gently. Okay, just to clean it. Next, take a piece of cotton bud, squeeze a bit of antibiotic cream or antiseptic cream. Just a wee bit will do. Rub it on your wound. Okay, just gently, a wee bit will do. Next, take a plaster, your favorite plaster. I have a lime green one over here. This white part here is for you to put it on your wound. Put on it. Wrap the plaster around. Now make sure that it's tight but not too tight so that it's breathing. So that your wound is breathing a little bit. Voila! It is done. Now you can clean the wounds every now and then, every one day. Uh, and you can, you can take off the plaster once the wound is dry. When you play, you run, you climb, you jump, and then sometimes you trip and you fall down. When that happens, don't panic. Crying doesn't help. Check your injuries. You check on your wounds and you realize that you have grazed yourself and it's bleeding. I put a little bit of red mark over here just to show you that I've grazed myself and it's bleeding. So first thing first, what do you do? Take a clean piece of tissue or clean piece of cloth, press on it to stop it from bleeding. Once the bleeding has stopped, wash it with clean water. So clean the wounds, just wash it, clean the wounds, okay? Make sure that your fingers and your hands are clean as well because you'll be touching your wounds. Then, take another clean piece of tissue or cloth, 
pat it dry. Okay, pat the wound dry. Keep your hands clean and dry as well. Next thing, take a piece of cotton squares, a little bit of Dettol, dab on it, and pat it gently on your wound. I like to use Dettol to clean the wounds because of the, so that it helps to kill the bacteria. Okay, once that is done, just blow for it to dry. Okay, then next, take a piece of cotton bud. A little bit of antibiotic cream or antiseptic cream. Okay. Rub it gently on your wound. Spread it all. Spread it around to make sure your wound is covered with antibiotic cream or antiseptic cream. Okay, this will do. So now you wrap it with plaster. But because the wound is so big, the plaster can't fit. So what do you do? Take a clean piece of gauge. Okay fold it or you can cut it just to fit your wounds I think this is, should be enough just like that alright now you need a surgical tape just to tape the bandage just like that okay just make sure that it's taped properly and a little bit more tight Just like this. Voila, we are done. You just need to change your dressings every few hours and it takes about two or three days for it to heal. And once it's healed, you can take away the dressings. When we play, sometimes it gets so hot that some of us get no split. When that happens, what do you do? Run to a nearest bench or chair, sit down, take some clean piece of tissue or cloth, uh, press on your nose, Lean forward and let the blood drip. Okay, it takes about 8 to 10 minutes for the blood to stop dripping. And when that happens, sit back up, clean your nose, wash your face just to freshen up yourself, and then drink lots and lots of water to hydrate yourself and lie down and rest. Next thing we're going to learn is burn. There are four types of burn. First degree burn only affects the outer layer of the skin, for example, mild sunburn or you touch something really hot. Your skin turns red and it can be a little bit painful or sore. Second degree burn, the outer layer and the second layer, the dermis, has been damaged. This kind of burn will, will cause the skin to look bright red, swollen and there may be some blisters. Third degree burn, this type of burn is pretty serious as it destroys two full layers of your skin. The skin may appear black, brown, white or yellow. Fourth degree burn, this type of burn is most severe and is life threatening. It destroys all layers of the skin as well as the bones, muscles and tendons. Now today, we're only going to be learning first degree burn. So sometimes you accidentally touch on something really hot or you scalded yourself with hot boiling water. So what do you do? Let's say you accidentally touch on a hot cooking pan or some fire. Ouch! And you burn yourself and it's turned a little red. So what do you do? Run it under tap water. Just run it for a few minutes until your fingers don't feel so sore anymore. Okay. Then, take a thin piece of tissue or cloth and pat it dry. Now because your fingers may be a little bit sore from the burn, so just be gentle. Take some aloe vera gel. Squeeze a little bit and just rub it on the burn part. Blow it to dry. You feel a little bit of cooling sensation. Just keep applying aloe vera gel every few minutes or every few hours and it will heal after a day or two. For other type of burns, you will need to go see the doctors immediately. Now that you've learned some basic first aid skills, what do you do when you face an emergency situation? Scenario number one. You're happy playing in the outdoors, running, jumping, skipping, and suddenly you trip and hurt yourself and injured yourself badly. What do you do? Now, first thing, screaming, crying, shouting is not going to help you to make you feel better. I know it's painful. Let the pain subside. Stay calm. And then when you can, sit up, assess your injury, and see where you're wounded. After that, if you're able to stand up, slowly walk back home and tell mommy and daddy what happened. But if you can't walk, 
call for help. Help will come to you. Scenario number two. What happens if someone at home accidentally injured themselves? Like a small little cut or a little wood. What do you do? Apply the six steps that I've taught you earlier. Scenario number three. What happens if someone at home falls down and becomes unconscious? Run up to that person, assess the whole situation first to make sure there's no danger items like knives or electrical wires. If there is, put it aside carefully. Then run up to that person, tap on that person and call on the person gently. Do not move that person. Okay? If the person remains unconscious, pick up the phone, call 999. That's the hotline for police and ambulance. Tell the person on the phone who you are, where do you stay and tell them what happened. Help will come to you. In the meantime, just stay calm. That's the end of our video for today. I hope you have enjoyed learning basic first aid skills with me. To watch more videos from Learn with Auntie Beth, click on the subscribe button down below. See you next time.